A religious perceptional reality was used to replace a spiritual perceptional reality. All right? Because the spiritual sense of reality, you're connected to everything, man. You know, you're connected. But in the religious perceptional reality, see, you committed a crime for being born, see, you're f forgetting here. <laughs> yeah, I didn't make this up. <laughs> I'm not making it up now. <laughs> right? And so anyway, in order to be justify being here, <laughs> to get to stay, right, you had to submit to the male dominator chain of command, the authoritarian system. See, in this new religious reality said that, you know, well, now there's one, there's one God. The gods battle it out amongst themselves, see. <laughs> see, I can't envision, to me, I've never been able to envision gods or goddesses. I can't imagine a creator in a human form. I mean, no, you know, I can't. And I think our, our road, our path to trouble started when we started to do it that way. All right, I, you know, looking at the earth as the mother and these things, you know, call her the goddess, whatever, and this and that. See, but I don't, I don't go with God because I know that's a limited perceptional reality. See, they forced it on us, but the trouble came, see, when, when we decided that the creator entity had a human form. See, because then that, that rationalized and justified mistreating the rest of the natural world. All right? I mean, sexism and racism came out of this perceptional change because once the earth, you know, under the new God thing, see, the earth was no longer the mother. The earth was the property of this new God and, and uh, all God's children. See, God didn't have a lot then, but they were very mean, so their numbers <laughs> expanded through terror. See, but God's children, was the, their job and objective was to subdue the earth for this God. So in order to achieve that objective, they had to create sexism. See, sexism has got to do with how we live with the earth. And racism, because now the per earth was property, you know, and all spiritual value was away, was away from the earth, you know. Real spiritual value was now a religious perceptional thing, and, right? So it wasn't all-encompassing. It wasn't just a part of the reality anymore. So not a one of our people really went for this. Because it's like, you know, this is a major perceptional reality change. But anyway, we're, we're, we committed a moral crime for getting here, so now we had to submit to that world view. To me, coherently to me, it's clearly a blatant, a blatant, very blatant perceptional altering how one perceives reality. I mean, it's brainwashing intensified at its maximum, right? Because our ancestors were forced to see life differently in order to remain just physically alive. All right, you know, it's like, I, I don't really know that much about what happened to Europe, but I would suggest every person of European descendancy that you go and you study. You want to know more about you, who, your, your reality? Go and study your tribal ancestry and see how you got civilized. <laughs> All right? See how you got civilized. Because terrible things happened. And these terrible things, these are what altered the perceptional reality. See, and because the basic, basic part of this, and that altering of the pe perceptional reality, what we're getting down to is, is it made us become irresponsible as human beings. Because, see, we can blame the bad guys for being bad guys, but that don't work. It's not enough. It's about human beings remembering their spiritual, real their spiritual identity and accepting the responsibility from that perceptional reality taking responsibility. Because the bad guys only get away with what they get away with because we don't take responsibility. Because there's a difference between blaming somebody for something and taking responsibility. So when Columbus got here, he got off the boat and he said to the first people he saw, who are you? And the first people he saw said, we're human beings. And Columbus said, oh, Indians. He, and, and right now when I'm talking, Columbus is every descendant of the tribe of Europe that came. <laughs> all right? We're not talking one person here. We're talking a mindset. All right? This is a, a mentality that came, the Columbus mentality, we name it. <laughs> right? because, but it's about discovering. This is, you know, it's like almost like this is when the virus got here. And this is how long it's been here. But because you know, we've never had this disease before, we have no natural, we, can't, we don't have an immunity to it. But if we can survive the ravages of this disease, we will evolve an immunity to it because we are the part of the earth and that's what happens, <laughs> right? Anyway, Columbus got here. 
And he didn't know what it meant to be a human being. See, that perceptional reality of being a human being and what it really meant had been erased from descendants of the tribes of Europe by the time they got here. So when, when, we, when we introduced ourselves to the European a, as human beings, they just didn't get it. It wasn't a part of their perceptional reality. They might know how to say the words, right? But being a human being had changed in their reality, right? We know there was an inquisition. And this inquisition went on for four or five hundred years in Europe. The purpose of the inquisition was to alter the perceptional reality of the descendants of the tribes of Europe. To make them believe and see reality the way the church wanted them to believe and see reality. The church called it, they waged a war for possession, for possession, this is important, they waged a war for the possession of the souls of the godless heathens. And to be a godless heathen, you just didn't believe in God. <laughs> it wasn't part of your reality. Or another way of becoming a godless heathen was to question the authority of the church to do this. See, and I, again, I'm not making this up. You know, this, this, this did transpire. These things did happen. And they killed as many people as they could, I guarantee it, in order to get the other ones to submit. So they killed as efficiently as they could with the technology they had at their disposal at that time, all right, and because they created a rationalization as to why to do it, so it just became as efficient as they could do. And at some point, the descendants of the tribes of Europe no longer knew what it meant to be a human being. <laughs> they just didn't know. They didn't want to know. So the descendants of the tribes of Europe, in the end, <laughs> had to love what they feared, which was there to possess them. See, and I think it messed up love in a lot of ways, you know, that they haven't unsorted yet. <laughs> no offense, but... <laughs> But anyway, all of this took place through our intelligence. Our intelligence. Now, whoever it is we pray to, right? whoever it is we pray to, however we pray, whatever, however we do that, all right? I think that we have an obligation and a responsibility, and it's about respect. If we respect our Creator, then we should use our intelligence as intelligently as we can as often as we can. And that means with clarity and coherency. That means to activate and respect our intelligence and activate the thinking process so that it's going the way we want it to be because that's why it was given to us. Our intelligence, as, a hum as the human being part of all of this reality that's going on, we were given intelligence. This is what was there to help us through the evolutionary reality, to ride the balance, so to speak, of the evolution with our intelligence. Our, it's our medicine, it's our protection, it's our self-defense. Those fears and doubts and insecurity in, in one's daily mind and reality, how much do they affect, affect one's daily mind and reality? How much do they affect the ones of the people around them that they're connected to and cared about, that they care about? So how, what, what's the repercussions of the fears and the doubts and insecurity? Because I guarantee you, every day when we get up, we use our intelligence to create those effects. So it isn't that we're not using our intelligence or we can't use our intelligence. We can't stop using our intelligence. But it's about as human beings taking the responsibility to be as clear as one possibly can be about it and use our intelligence the way our Creator gave it to us to use. <laughs> Keep the balance. Our intelligence. So this is everything that ever happened. Had to change the perceptional reality, this, the, the battleground had to take place. The real battleground may have been the bleeding and the dying, but it has to do with the intelligence to alter the perceptional reality. So again, about respect. See, if we respect our Creator, we have a responsibility to recognize our intelligence and use it as clearly and coherently as we possibly can. Otherwise, we're just pretending. We're just being delusional and rationalizing and justifying and just telling ourselves a big lie. If we do not use our intelligence as intelligently as we possibly can, that's how we show respect to our Creator. See, and you can't say you don't know because I just told it to you. <laughs> All right? So, I mean, 